I'd like to read a parable from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. This is the famous parable of the wheat and the tares. Another parable he set forth before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while he was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed also darnel, weeds resembling wheat, among the wheat, and went on his way. So when the plants sprouted and formed grain, the weeds that look like wheat appeared also. And the servants of the owner of this field came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have weeds in it? The owner replied to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and weed them out? But the owner said no, lest in gathering the wild wheat, the false wheat, the weeds, you root up the true wheat along with it. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will say to the reapers, gather the weeds first, bind it in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my granary. Now the disciples didn't quite know the meaning of this parable, so they asked him later. When Jesus left the throngs and went into the house, his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed means the children of the kingdom, the weeds that look like wheat are children of the evil one. The enemy that sowed it is the devil. The harvest is the close and consummation of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as those weeds that look like wheat are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the close of the age. <coughs> There's so much in this parable one can glean from. <clears throat> but I'd like to focus on two areas in which I believe, speaking for myself at least, um, I believed false doctrine. My thinking was off. It concerns forgiveness and judgment. Let's go back and read this. Notice that when the servants or the slaves of the owner of the field notice when those who were completely devoted to the owner of the field I'm talking about God notice when those who are completely devoted to their conscience 
Notice what they asked the owner of the field when they discovered we've got weeds growing in this field of wheat. We've got false wheat. It looks like wheat. It even has little seeds and granules like wheat. But it's not. Looks like wheat. Acts like wheat. Talks like wheat. Smells like wheat. But the fruit of that false wheat is poisonous. What do we do? Do you, then they ask the owner of the field, do you want us to go out and pluck it up by the roots and throw it in the fire? You want us to get rid of these bad seeds. That's a legitimate question <laughs> that springs from the heart of those who have been abused, recognize they've been oppressed, recognize the source of their oppressor, and are compelled to do something about it. Such as seek revenge, maybe? Or such as uproot the one who abused them so he or she can't do it to anyone else? That's the normal response. Notice when the servants of the farmer asked him, should we go out and uproot these bad seeds, these weeds? Notice the farmer didn't rebuke them for saying that. How dare you? Because I say that because this is what you would hear in many churches or many families or many social institutions. This is what you would hear from Hollywood or Madison Avenue, the mainstream media. How could you even think of uprooting those weeds? They're part of your family. Look at them. They look like you. No, Jesus did not rebuke them for asking them, for asking him permission to uproot them. He did not say, no, I'll tell you what, I love the weeds too. I love the tares just as much as the wheat. The weeds are just as valuable as the wheat. Let's harvest them together. We'll put the weeds and the wheat together, mingle them together in my barn Go ahead and make flour out of both of them. Bake bread using both of them. Because they're just as valuable as the wheat. The false wheat. I love them too. You'd have a lot of sick people in that family. Or anyone who happened to eat the, the produce coming from that farm. I'd imagine eating weed seed isn't too good for you. It's worthless. Weeds are weeds because they're worthless. A weed is a weed because there's really no value to it. No, he did not rebuke them for wanting to do something about the false wheat. He didn't rebuke them for it. 
But he did tell them no. He instructed them, no, don't root them up. Let them grow together with the wheat. I'll take care of it at the end of the age. At harvest time, I'll take care of it. You might end up herding some legitimate wheat in the process of uprooting the weeds. For the sake of the wheat... Not for the sake of the weeds. Not for the sake of the tares. For the sake of the wheat. Leave them alone. I've heard this say, I've heard people say this, I've heard this said, excuse me, that... We are to forgive the wicked for the sake of our own soul. It's not what it says here. We forgive the wicked, and I'm going to talk about that. It's not what many people think. We forgive the wicked, the weeds, for the sake of of the good people who are in our circle for the sake of good people who we may have influence over. Not for the sake of our own soul. You ever heard that one? Yes. We do it so as not to spiritually, emotionally, or in some cases physically, injure another person. Now let me tell you what forgiveness is in this context. Forgiveness of the unrepentant, unremorseful abuser. It's following Jesus' instruction to say, no, don't uproot them. Don't lower yourself to the level of the weeds. Don't set out to destroy them. Let me take care of it. It's not, forgiveness in this context is not reconciliation with your abuser at all. Get away from them. Know that your visceral desire to uproot them is natural your desire for justice according to this parable is perfectly natural and God does not rebuke you for wanting justice but he is telling you no don't execute justice on your own let Turn it over to me. I'll take care of it at the appointed time. It takes faith, I know. Let me give you a qualifier, though. In cases, I wrote this down because I I write better than I speak. This does not preclude taking measures, including legal measures, to ensure one's own protection or the protection of one's children. If you can do that, do it. But forgiveness is not reconciliation, not when it comes to a wicked person, an abusive person, an oppressive person. Forgiveness is simply saying, okay, I'm not going to take out revenge on this person. I'm not going to set out to destroy this this man or this woman's life like he set out to destroy mine. That's forgiveness. Do, do, do you agree with that? That's forgiveness! I hear it all the time through our channel. People tell me that 
you know, for the sake of my own soul, well, I don't hear it that often, actually. But now and then someone will tell me, <laughs> as if they care about me, I need to forgive for the sake of my own soul, my, my abusive family. I have. <laughs> well, no, you haven't. You haven't spoken to them in years. You don't understand forgiveness. I have forgiven them. I'm not out to seek revenge against them. I simply walked away from them. I'm not doing a thing to hurt them. I'm not doing a thing to injure them. I'm not doing a thing to slander them. I, even this channel, I do it anonymously to protect them. I have forgiven them. I am patiently waiting for the judge of judges. I am simply patiently waiting for the Supreme Court of the universe to execute his judgment on them. And he will. Here's another item. We're not to judge. We're not to judge other people. You don't know what's in the heart of another. Have you ever heard that? You don't know what's in their heart. You don't know what's in them. You shouldn't judge. You shouldn't. In fact, it's to the point in many modern theological circles, we're not even allowed to discern between good and evil. We're not qualified. Notice when the servants came to the owner of the field and told him, we just discovered we have bad seed mixed with good seed. The bad wheat looks like the good wheat, but we are now able to discern it's evil. Notice the owner of the field did not say, no, you're not qualified to make that assertion. How dare you? How dare you judge between good wheat and bad wheat? You're not capable of that. Only I am. No, the owner of the field did not say that. God did not say that. Again, he simply told them what to do. Let them grow together to the end of the age. I'll take care of it. No, we are able to discern good and evil. We are capable of discerning or judging <clears throat> between wheat and tares. We are able to discern between the children of God and the children of the devil. We are able to discern and judge between men and women who follow their conscience and those who don't. And people who consistently, habitually, with no remorse, with no regret, year after year, decade after decade, abuse and hurt and injure other people are children of the devil. Practitioners of evil. I'll read 1 John chapter 3 to you to make my point. 
1 John 3, 8 to 10, out of the Amplified Classic. He who commits sin, he who is committed to sin, he who practices evil doing, they practice it. They're trying to get good at it. He who does these things is of the devil. They're tares. They're, we they're, they're false wheat. They're weeds. They take their character. They take their character. They take it. They receive it. They receive their character from the evil one. The devil planted that seed. Listen to what the Apostle John wrote. By this, it is made clear who take their nature from God and are his children and who take their nature from the devil and are his children. It is made clear, I'm reading directly from the Bible, it is made clear who take their nature from God. It is made clear. It's easy to see. It's easy to perceive. It is perceptible. It is easy to interpret. You can see it. You can discern it who take their nature from God. You can discern who takes their nature from the devil. So all this talk of, well, we shouldn't judge because you really don't know what's in the heart of a man flies in the face of the Word of God. It also flies in the face of good old-fashioned common sense, to be honest with you. Thank you.